Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire. Appreciate you stopping by. I have to apologize. I still am under the weather, so my voice is a little bit off. I wanted to show you a variation on a technique that I shared in a video a few days ago where you combine rubber cement for masking with your stencils. So I actually have two cards that I created with this technique today, and it was so much fun to do. And it's kind of messy, but f playful and fun all at once. I'm using a new large hay stencil from Studio Calico, and I wanted to be able to stick it to my paper so it didn't move while we did the techniques. So I went outside and gave it a quick spray with some temporary spray adhesive. Now the one I'm showing you here is not the one that I actually recommend you using. I can't find my bottle that I recommend you using, but I will link to the one that is best for this in my YouTube description below and over on my blog. So I'm going to take this and stick it onto a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch watercolor paper. I really like the Tim Holtz watercolor paper. And I'm just going to stick this in place so that I mask the word hay on this paper. Now masking with stencils can be tricky because you don't want to cut a mask to this shape. So I'm using rubber cement. I'm actually taking some of the rubber cement and putting it onto my craft sheet. You could put on scrap paper if you want to. And I'm using an ink blending tool with a clean piece of foam on it to apply this over the entire surface here. You could use a brush to do this if you want. The reason I'm not taking it directly from the bottle is that rubber cement dries out pretty quickly. So you want to keep the cap on it as much as you can. I find this tool is easier to apply it. Now I'm doing a very thin coating just so that it doesn't take long to dry and I don't care if a little bit of the color gets through. But if you really want to make sure that you're completely protecting your background around your stencil, you want to put on a pretty good thick coat of it and it won't take that long to dry. So once I feel like I've covered all the paper around the word hay, I'm, you can kind of see it in the light here, I'm just going to let that dry for a few minutes and then we can take off the stencil. Now the nice thing is, is rubber cement is easy to clean off things. So I'll just peel the stencil off and then I can just use my finger to rub the rubber cement off of my stencil. Now I keep the sticky back to my stencil on there because then I can just stick it down the next time I need it. And you can try to remove it with a, you know, a glue remover, but I just leave the sticky back and just take the rubber cement off the top. So you can see that the area around the word hay is masked and the word hay itself is just regular paper now. And now it's time to add the little splotches of color. So I took some of my Studio Calico uh, Color Theory ink and put it onto my craft sheet and added water to it. And so I'm creating my own watercolor and I'm just tapping my paintbrush to kind of flick all of that, uh, all of that color over the piece here. Now anywhere there is rubber cement will protect the paper behind it. So that's why we did the rubber cement to mask around the word hay. Now you could use regular watercolors for this. You could use other dye inks mixed with water. I just really like how the Studio Calico mixes with the water for this. So now I decided that these splotches were a little bit too dark. I wanted a softer look. So what I'm doing is just heat setting it a little bit, just a little bit. And then before it's completely dry, I'm taking a cloth and I'm gonna dab it once and remove some of the color and I end up with softer results. Check it out, it's just like a softer blue. This is a great trick when you're doing splotches like this and it seems like it's a little bit too much. You can kind of take away some of the intensity by dabbing it away. Now I'm going to repeat this process with other colors of the Studio Calico inks. I did something blue, this is Emerald City, and you can see me flicking on lots of this color and it's very dark. So I will do the same thing where I dry it a little bit and then dab it away. Another advantage of drying a little bit and dabbing away is that you don't have puddles of color when you go on to the next color. So if I would have left those other very wet before I brought more colors in, they would all just start mixing together, which is fine, but you don't keep the really true colors of, uh, you know, little splatters of color if they all blend together. So by drying it a little bit in between, you can prevent that. And also you get these softer results. They're just really nice. So I'm going to continue this with a yellow color, the sunshine, a coral blush, and also the poppy color, which is a red that I love. So once I've covered that whole area, it looks like a hot mess right now, but I promise it'll be better. I'm coming in with an ink blending tool and the Something Blue uh, Color Theory ink, and I'm just applying a little bit over the letters. And you can see that the rubber cement is kind of resisting that color. 
and adding that soft blue ink just really makes the word pop out even more. Okay, so now that we have finished all of our coloring, it's time to remove our mask. So to remove the rubber cement is super easy. You just rub it away with your fingers. You'll see it kind of pills up and you can just brush it away. You could use an erase, eraser or a cloth to do this, but I found I just get the best results with my finger because I can kind of just rub the areas away that need to be rubbed away and not over my, my letters. This is all good and dry, so it really shouldn't matter. Now remember, I did put a very thin coat of the rubber cement, so some of the color that splattered in the area around the word hay might show up a little bit, but I didn't care because I'm about to do this next step, and that'll cover it up. I have the poppy color, which is just a beautiful, like, um, bright pinkish red, adding some water to it, and I'm going to flick this over the whole thing because I wanted just a little bit of the pink in the background. And then what's cool is where this overlaps with the hay word, it actually kind of moves the color around a little bit and you get really bright pink spots on the word hay. I guess where the colors kind of interact. So you can see I dabbed it away again so that I get a light pink in the background. And check out the pink on the word hay. You get some bright spots like right there. It's just really pretty. Just a great way to kind of do a fun messy card but still kind of control it a little bit. So I did want to show you this variation of the card. So this time, this is a different card. This is the second card. I have put down the word hay, and I didn't use any rubber cement masking. So if you don't have that rubber cement, you could just do this version of the card instead. But rubber cement is something that you could get at office supply stores, or I even found it at my grocery store. For this card version, I went ahead and added two colors before I dried it and dabbed it off in between. So there was a little bit of blending between some of those colors. But you can see what a big difference it makes to kind of dab off as you're going. It kind of helps to control the mess. So if you're one of those people like me who loves the look of a mess but has a hard time like actually creating it, these tips may be helpful for you too. Okay, so after I've done all my flecks of color in the background, I wanted to do kind of a blue halo of color around the letter, the stencil itself. So I'm just taking my inking tool with the blue ink, starting on the stencil and pulling it off onto the paper, and that just gives like a soft blue halo. Now when I remove this stencil, even though it was kind of stuck on there with that spray adhesive, some of the watercolor gets under the stencil because if it lands right on the edge of that stencil, it'll want to kind of suck into behind the stencil. But that's okay, that's part of this technique and kind of the, the fun, messy look of it. But if you, again, are like me and have issues with things like that, what I did is I scraped away some of that watercolor that got on the word hay. So I just scraped it away gently with my craft knife. This is easy to do on watercolor paper. And then I rubbed it smooth with an eraser. And there you can see I cleaned up the whole word hay and I have all that messy goodness around it. Now that we have the colorful backgrounds created on both of these cards, let's do this simple finishing touches. I'm using this awesome die from Studio Calico. I've been wanting to use this one for so long. And it's something that creates like a, the word awesome kind of floating on the edge of a piece of paper. But I only want it up against a thin strip. So that's why I'm doing it along the edge of my black cardstock. But this is really cool because you could do it across the top of a card or along a big piece. And it looks like those word, the word awesome is stuck to it. It kind of looks like a partial die cutting technique, but without all the effort needed. I'm going to glue this down onto both the backgrounds at a diagonal along with the bottom of the word hay. Now once I stuck this down, I felt like that awesome word was just kind of floating there and didn't like pull into the background enough. I just, just that black piece just stood out a little bit too much. So the trick that I did when I do this quite often is I added a thin strip of cardstock that kind of pulled it all together. This is a trick I use often with card making. It's a great way to use up scraps. So I cut two thin strips of cardstock. One is pool and one is like a coral color and I'll use them on these two cards. And I just put adhesive along the back. If some of the adhesive kind of wants to peek out the sides, I run my fingers along it and then I stick it right onto the card and that just seems to kind of pull that awesome word into the background that we created. And I'll do the same on the other card too. You could use fun little strips of glitter paper or foil paper, but sometimes all you need is a colorful cardstock. I wanted to add one simple embellishment to these cards, so I added a little heart cut from some coral cardstock. And to add a little bit of shine to it, I covered both of the hearts with my clear Wink of Stella pen and a thin coating of glossy accents just for some added shine and dimension. After the glossy accents dried, I trimmed off a little bit off each side of these panels and I put them on a four and a half by five and or I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half inch black note card. 
just thought that kind of made the whole piece pop. So there you have a way you can use your stencils with rubber cement for masking and some tips for kind of controlling the messy look. If you're interested in the products I talk about, it's they're all linked in my YouTube description below or I have a lot more over on my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. Thanks so much for spending time with me and we'll see you soon.